So when we did the video the other day about the muscle truck, and I, I, I asked the question, you know, which way should we go, a blower or a six pack on our 360? I couldn't believe how many people requested the six pack. You know, and like, in my mind, it's kind of, you know, it's an obscure thing. It's like from the distant past, but evidently there's still a lot of interest in these things. And even a lot of the guys who talked about putting a blower on it were like, yeah, put a blower and a six pack. So the six pack wins by a landslide and that's how we're going to end up going with this truck. We're going to do a six barrel 360. But I figured as long as there's so much interest in these things, let's do a quick video on like the history and the variations and whatnot of the six pack setup. You know, because I mean, a lot of you guys, you know, it, it, it's um, the details of it are very obscure. And, uh, and even to people who are familiar with them, there's like a lot of mystery as to like, you know, tuning them and so on and so forth. So let's, let's talk about all that stuff. But um, the history of it. So the first thing you got to realize is that the, the, the Chrysler six pack setup is based on the 2300 series Holly. And the 2300 series Holly is like, it's a, it's a Holly carburetor, but it's really a Ford carburetor from the 1950s. It's, you can identify them instantly because they have that weird footprint. Um, but anyway, tripowers were popular in the, in the 50s and the early 60s. You know, Oles, the Oldsmobile, uh, the, 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 uh, whatever the Oldsmobile called it. Um, of course, Chevy had them, uh, uh, Pontiac, and they were all based on the Rochester carburetors. The, uh, what Ford did in 1961, they made uh, a, a, a tri-power setup available as a dealer installed option for the 390. And what they did was they used three of their uh, normal uh, production 2300 series Hollies. Uh, the three carburetors are grouped, oh here, here's a picture of, uh, let's see right here. Okay, so here's the original, the, 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 the original six pack setup as we've come to know it. And this is the Ford setup and uh, the center carburetor was 330 CFM and the two outboards were uh, 350 CFM each. Um, together they flowed uh, approximately 700, okay, so remember now, two barrel carburetors and four barrel carburetors are rated differently. So while this represents over a thousand CFM, it actually only flows about the same, about the equivalent of a 700 CFM Holly, a single four barrel. So, but anyway, this was the Ford setup. This was the original Ford setup. They used a 330, 330 CFM center carburetor and the outboards were 350s. So that was dealer, dealer available in 1961. And then in 1962, they made it a factory option on the 406 Galaxies. And it, it carried over to all the car lines too. And Ford really went nuts with this basic setup. They made it available for everything over the counter, you know, dealer for, from, from, the, from the 289 on up. So they got a lot of mileage out of this setup and it worked really good. 1967, General Motors up to, up to that point had been using the Rochester carburetors. Uh, but when uh, Chevy wanted to do a tri-power version of the 427, they needed something that had a little, you know, was gonna flow a little bit more, a little bit more substantial. So Chevrolet adopted these basic carburetors, the 2300 series footprint, and came up with the 435-427 Corvette. So these are, no, it's a Chrysler. Oh, there you go. Okay, so here, here are the Chevy carburetors. Now you see the difference here. What they did was they went from the side hung float bowl that they used on the Fords to the center hung float bowl, the larger float bowl uh, from, from the higher performance carburetors. And they, um, they eliminated the mechanical secondary, they were in a vacuum secondary setup. So you can see these outboard carburetors don't have metering blocks. The center carburetor has a metering block, the outboard carburetors don't, they have metering plates. And then this here is the shutdown linkage. On the other side, you can't see them here, are the diaphragms. The outboard carburetors have two diaphragms. So essentially what it is, is it's, it's, a, it's, a, single, it, it's a single four barrel carburetor with an extra set of secondaries. Um, Chevrolet ran with this setup 67, 68, 69. And it worked really well. So now, the next step in the evolution of this is when Chrysler adapted it. Chrysler adapted it in 1969 for the A12 cars. And here's the Chrysler version. 
Now the main difference between the Chrysler version and the Chevrolet version, so these are the same diaphragms, the same secondary diaphragms that were on the Chevy. The main difference is they move the fuel line from the driver's side of the carburetor, which was a 3 8 inlet on the Chevys, to a 5 16 inlet that's on the passenger side on the Chryslers. So if, if, you, if you're looking at old six, original six-pack carburetors, and you're wondering, uh, you know, is it, is it a Chevy carburetor or is it a Chrysler carburetor? The fuel line is a giveaway. The, uh, you know, because the, the 5 16 line on the passenger side is Chrysler and the 3 8 line on the driver's side is the Chevrolet. So that's the setup as it went into production in 1969 on the A12 cars. And those were the liftoff glass hood 69 Roadrunners and, uh, and, and Super Bs. Those cars had a, a castle and an aluminum Edelbrock manifold, the identical one that you could buy today actually, they still sell these things new. Um, in, when, they, when they went into, those cars were limited production, when they went into full production in 70 and 71, they went to a cast iron manifold. So that's the quickest way to tell if you've got an original 70, 71 setup, this is going to have a cast iron manifold. There were running changes in the, in the carburetors as far as like a, a different numbers and, 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 and slightly different calibrations that vary from, from, from year to year and from automatic to, uh, to, to manual. And we'll leave that stuff to like Mark Worman and the, and the Graveyard Cars people. We're just talking about the performance aspects of these carburetors. So that's the, the essential setup as it was used on the 440 from 1969 to 1971. They did also use this setup on the 346 pack, the 1970 TA Challengers and AAR Cudas had the same exact carburetors, but on a, on a small block intake manifold, which again, you can buy new, and that's actually the same one that we're gonna use on our, our truck build. The carburetors are the same. Now, the, the, okay, so as far as tuning goes, people are like, well, how do you tune a six pack setup? Well, the tuning of a six pack setup is all in the secondaries, the secondary side of the carburetor. Jetting changes are the same as you'll find on any Holly. And from what I've, my experience is these things are really close, right out of the box. And by the way, um, we talked about the CFM. Let's go back for a minute, right? Ford used the, the 330 center and the two 350 outboards. When Chevrolet adapted this system, they went to a 350 center, 350 CFM center, and two 500 CFM outboard carburetors. And Chrysler carried that over. The Chrysler setup is the same. It's, whoops, it's 350 CFM center, two 500 CFM outboards. Um, the total is, is, is 1,350 CFM on paper, the way, remember, where two barrels are rated, and it actually flows approximately 975 CFM if you would have counted it as a, as a single four barrel. So the tuning on these things. Jet changes aside, the big tuning is getting the secondaries to open you know, when they're supposed to. When Chrysler and Chevrolet for that matter, when the manufacturers adopted this setup, they wanted a smooth transition to the secondary opening. So basically what happens is if, if you've got a six pack setup and it's uh, uh, tuned for aggressive secondary throttle opening, these things hit like sledgehammers. Like, you know, I mean, they're severe. It's magic. You know, if, unless you've actually driven one of these things, you really can't, you know, a, a explain it. But the way the factory calibrated these is they wanted a, a, a gradual tip in. They wanted the motor to get up around 3,500, 4,000 RPM and then slowly bring the secondary carburetors in and they'd be all in at around 5,000, 5,500. Um, if, you, if you've ever driven a factory calibrated six pack car, it's like a very frustrating experience, you know. You flat foot it, you're only on that 350 CFM, you know, primary carb, and it seems to take forever for the secondaries to open. They start to crack open and all of a sudden, wah, they're all there. And then by the time that happens, it's time to shift, right? So, but at any rate, tuning these things, the, the key to tuning these things is to get the secondaries to open quickly but without bogging, because remember you're talking about opening a thousand CFM uh, you know, worth of secondary carburetor all at once. What Holly did 
to uh, the factory calibration in these things is the lightest yellow spring that they that they the lightest spring, which is the yellow one, in the in the outboard diaphragms, and then they also added what they call the kill bleed inside the the. the in, inside the, the, the body of the carburetor. And the kill bleed, what that does is it, the, the carburetors get that, uh, the, the signal to start opening, but they don't get full vacuum. Some of it is bled off through this passage. And in the old days, like I remember when I was a kid, the, 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 you know, the, the trick with the six pack setups was to take a lead pencil and sharpen it really good and then stick it down into the, the kill bleed hole and break off the tip. And that would block off the uh, you know that 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 passage. Now when you go to take the car for a ride, you hit the gas. She'd get she'd get out. But she'd just start to get out and yeah, it would flop open the carburetors and the car would fall on its face. So to make it start to work, you know, to, to start to tune it, what you would do at that point is start adding heavier springs to the outboard carburetors. And even when you got to like whatever the heaviest spring is, I think it's a black spring. I, I, I know I think I got a brain tumor. Um, even with the heaviest spring, they would still open to the point that if the motor wasn't like fully warmed up, it would still, you'd still get that little bit of a balk. But when they worked right, man, wow, they were like right on. And, and we're going to get, we're going to get into the, the, when we get our six pack set up going, we're going to get into the, the, that, that tuning aspect of it. Um, okay. So the breaking of the lead tip off is, you know, kind of a backyard. A lot of the the, the, the the more professional guys would actually drill uh, the, the the kill bleed hole open, insert a, a plug, and then drill the plug for you know an orifice size for a more regulated you know. But who's got time for that, right? So at any rate, um, what Chrysler did because there were so many ill, you know, badly tuned or butchered six pack setups out there, what Chrysler did was they offered this setup right here, which is a return to the Ford system of doing things, where this is a mechanical, this setup here is, is intended for mechanical linkage, there's no vacuum diaphragms on them, and the outboard carburetors have both have metering blocks like the original Ford design did, and they have an accelerator pump. So now there's no bog, it's, it's, a, it's a, think of it as, a double pump, double feed, but it's a triple pump, triple feed. That's all it is. It's as simple as simple as you could possibly get. There's really no tuning to these things. You take them out of the box, you bolt them on the engine, you flat punch it, and you go. Uh, they work fantastic. Now, they're also expensive. All of these six pack setups are expensive. But one of the things we want to get into, one of the things we want to show you, is how you can build a six pack setup using very cheap carburetors. You could do some swap meet shopping. And if you know which carburetors to look for, uh, and, and they're all factory Ford carburetors, uh, and they range from 260 CFM, like what they used to use on the Edsels, up to 500 CFM, what they're using on some of the full-size Ford trucks. And they have that 2300 series footprint, and you can actually adopt them to the, to the six-pack manifold, which you can still buy new. And, uh, you, and with mechanical linkage, and you can actually fabricate uh, a very functional six-pack setup um, using slot meat carburetors. The last one I put together, I think I had like $60 wrapped up in the carburetors, period. So, um, anyway, we're going to get into all of that too. So, that's it. Just a quick rundown on, on the, the, the Chrysler six-pack setup, its origins, and, and kind of like what we plan on doing with ours. Um, and that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.